Good morning, everybody. Uh, before I get started talking about my senior project, I'd like to touch upon three topics that sort of illustrate my human ecological mindset. Um, the first, in studying uh, renewable energies, um, I realized that when we talk, think of renewable energies, we usually think of solar panels first, and then wind energies, hydro energy. But all these types of renewable energies are primarily producing electricity. And electricity only accounts for 20% of global energy consumption. There's another 20 to 30% that is in uh, transportation, and another 50% that largely is in, in industries and domestic use, which largely is in heat. And unluckily, most of that heat is produced by fossil fuels. So when we think of renewable energies, it's important to keep in mind that we need something that produces heat, and we also need something that is cheap and accessible to the rural poor, and the poor in general in developing countries. Uh, the other topic I studied is globalization and economics in general. And when I heard, you know, last year that the last company that was producing solar panels in the United States shut down, I thought that globalization wasn't really fit to deal with, you know, the sort of problems that we're facing in today's age. I'm thinking that if you want to, you know, make sure that everybody is able to access renewable energies, we should be able to invest every single last drop of oil we have in producing renewable energy technology. Um, what's also keeping people away from being able to produce things that help them deal with the sort of problems that we are facing in today's age is knowledge. People just don't have access to knowledge. And most of the knowledge that we have today is kept behind patent laws and is really inaccessible to most of humanity, especially the poor. So I heard about this approach called open source. It's an approach to create knowledge that is inherently accessible to anyone and it's actually, instead of copyrighted, copyleft So anybody can access it. And then in that way, you encourage people to actually use that knowledge, modify it, and improve it. So I kept these kinds of things in mind while I was designing my senior project. I wanted to contribute to something that was related to renewable energies, something that was in the realm of open source technology. So my Nepali friend, uh, who studied with me here in COA and prior to that in the UWC in India, uh, he went back to Nepal uh, last year, and within one year, he started a school, a rural school. Now you can see one of his students, one of his 45 students, that's Roja. Um, she's one of the students that are getting free education from the school. Um, the school is using the parents. Uh, this is in a rural area of Nepal. So the parents are contributing two days of, of labor per month to the school. And then um, my friend is able to use their labor to build you know, classrooms and, and operate a farm. Ultimately, his school is supposed to run a farm that, that puts out some profits that they can reinvest in funding the people's education. Now, I thought that was a great idea, you know, and, it, and it's working, and it's really impressive. And I thought that maybe his place can also become a place where they can teach the students not only how to farm and run businesses, but also how to produce the sort of technologies they need to run their local economies and industries. So I looked at what resources I could expect in Nepal, and I designed this framework that uh, I thought, you know, some modules I would be able to implement, others I would maybe not be able to implement because the resource wasn't there. But I prepared for everything. And then I put that project online and uh, asked people to donate money to me. And I just, you know, I didn't know whether this was going to go through. I just, you know, I applied for travel grants and I was set to go to Nepal, but I had no idea that, you know, it could actually work. But it finally actually worked. And I was able to raise that full amount of money to be able to build more than one of those modules that I envisioned building. So I got started putting up some solar panels in the school, and that is now producing the electricity they need to operate laptops and lighting, mainly. And I also imported a uh, steam engine from India that um, allows us to use steam to uh, run a generator or operate a mill or do any sort of thing. And then lastly, I focused on developing this solar concentrator. Now, solar concentrator uses mirrors to redirect sunlight. And the mirror is about 99% efficient uh, in redirecting sunlight. So you, you, you get a lot of heat from, from the sun that you then can turn into steam and run a steam engine with, or you can, you can bake with it, you can roast, distill, evaporate. So you can run a lot of uh, industries as well as domestic uh, uses with this. And it can build at any scale. So this is a mid-size scale that can power about a 10 horsepower engine. That's you know, like a small industrial machine. And it's a really cheap technology. But I, in my approach in Nepal, I, I tried to simplify the system even more, make it more easy to build and even cheaper. 
So I had some, you know, uh, I was spending some time thinking about that and sourcing all the materials. And, and then I got started constructing the um, solar concentrator on the school's property. You can see the solar panels up in the corner as well. Um, I couldn't finish the project, but it was a great start, you know, towards uh, enabling the school to, to run its uh, farm and, pro and start processing food on the farm and getting a better, uh, you know, margin out of what they're producing. And so I want to keep going with this kind of stuff because I think it's truly empowering to humanity to have knowledge that is accessible to everybody. So building plans and all sorts of things that, that people can take wherever they are, spend a little time adapting it to their needs, and then again let everybody else benefit from what they develop. So my primary inspiration came from Eric Wissens, who is on the um, right um, from me. right. Um, and um, uh, he, he has been developing this solar concentrator system, and his aim is to have this all open sourced. So in my senior project report, I was writing about my modifications to the system, and we're really trying to go forward and, and develop this technology so that the, everybody can build this. And it's right now already competitive with solar panels in terms of pricing, so we're expecting it to drop way below that. And for certain applications already, it can be significantly cheaper because of the, the you know, it, it produces a lot of thermal heat. And so we're hoping to continue this work. Uh, we started another fundraiser, uh, and we hope to, to build a, a solar concentrator this summer and my farm in Switzerland, and then in the process document all the, the, the steps necessary to do it, and write the budget up, and publish all the information needed for anybody to build this. So if you're interested in this project, um, you can go to solarfire.org and read all about it or talk to me, and uh, I would be really honored by your support also to be able to continue this work, and thank you. So the question was, what will happen to the work that I started in Nepal? So um, I hope to go back and continue. And I also have two people who are interested in continuing the project this October. So I'm going to either go there or help these people um, you know, continue the project. So there's a few more things to build and as well to uh, connect a few appliances to it to show that it can actually have a productive output. So I'll hope to just in either way, contribute to, to finishing and implementing the, the project thorough fully, you know. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.